Do you want to learn the basics of punch and roll recording with an auto punch in setup? Then this video is for you. Welcome to the Home Audio Project, the place to help narrators and voiceover artists edit and master their audio and break into the business. I'm audiobook engineer, Ryan May. Now, we're going to jump into the video in just a minute, but I wanted to give you something first. I put together a very simple guide that walks you through my process of EQ for narration. Now, I try not to overcomplicate how I work EQ if the recording is clean. Now, if the original recording is just trash and sounds really bad, that's a different story and there's a lot more adjustments. But this guide, I go over the low pass and the high pass filters, the lower mid range, which I deem the nasal frequency, and how you can get clarity out of your recording. So head to thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ and sign up there. Okay, let's jump into the session and see the basics to punch and roll. Okay, so now that we're in an audiobook session, usually you're gonna have your script up on an iPad, but I wanted to put it on my screen just so you could follow along, see what I was doing, and also see the session and how it works. So as we know, there are other methods of recording. There's the punch and roll, which I'm gonna show you today. There's the clicker method, and then there's the straight record, which I don't really recommend unless you're brand new and you're just trying to get your feet wet. So I'm in Pro Tools. I know that every DAW has some type of pre-roll feature that you can utilize to use that for your punch and roll system. What it basically does is it automatically punches in for you. So in Pro Tools, you have it set up here, you have a transport window, and you can see down here it says pre-roll, post-roll, and a fade-in. The only one that we are concerned about is pre-roll. So we click on pre-roll. I'm gonna give myself about three seconds. So you can do minutes, seconds, and then there's milliseconds. If you're really good and you just want one second, I have some narrator friends that don't really need that much of a pre-roll. So they, they might even go down to nanoseconds, right? Nanoseconds. They might even go down to milliseconds. So I'm gonna set up a, a three second pre-roll, hit enter. Now you can see it locked it in at three seconds. So what I wanna show you is wherever I move my cursor, you'll see this little yellow flag. That tells me that from wherever I drop my playhead to that yellow flag is three seconds. In Pro Tools, you can see right here that I am in the minutes and seconds way to see this grid, right? So these are seconds, as you can see, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? So these are all one second. So if I was to go perfectly at a second, which I'm not gonna nail it, but you can see one, two, three, right? So I've got my three second pre-roll set. So let's go ahead and begin recording. And again, I'm not a professional narrator. So you out there watching this, whether you're new or you're seasoned and you're just getting into this punch and roll method, you're probably gonna be better than I am, but I'm gonna try my best here. All good in the hood, he said. Hard not to be happy on a day like this. I turned and considered the day. He was right. It was a brilliant, beautiful morning. Is Ms. Roden coming in today? She might be later, I said. She's not feeling well at the moment. He nodded as if he... Okay. So, there. I've messed up. I hit stop on my play. And I obviously messed up right here, right? So, I'm going to drop my cursor right before it. And as I stated before, the little yellow flag is right here, right? So I'm gonna hear this whole line right there and that will give me my cue to punch back in. She's not feeling well at the moment. He nodded as if he knew why and sympathized. Hope is just a little morning sickness and nothing more. It is, thanks. I've got a few messages for her, he said. Should I just, I'll take them, I said. Make sure she gets them. He dropped several pink phone message slips into the drawer and slid it toward me. Some in... Some in there for you. Ah. Okay, see? So I messed up. I was about ready to keep going, but I needed to catch myself. So let's listen to a little bit of playback. Several pink phone message slips into the drawer and slid it toward me. 
summon. Okay, so my mess up was right here, right? So again, we drop our cursor right here and our playback will begin right in the middle of this line, which is okay because I'm gonna be referencing the script anyway and then continuing on. Drawer and slid it toward me. Some in there for you too. Thanks. I took the slips but didn't look through them. You okay, Chaplin? Randy Wade asked. I nodded. Sure. Okay, so I got the context wrong, but again, it's probably because I just don't have my script prep. But I hope this does show you that while I'm not a trained narrator, the punch and roll system can save you a lot more time. Because imagine if I had a lot more of these punch-ins to go through. Well, now I know that these are totally clean. If we listen back, hopefully you won't hear any cutoff breaths, right? So let's just listen back. I'm going to shut off my pre-roll just so we have a little bit faster of a playback. But these punches should be clean enough, and based on where I dropped my playhead, that I shouldn't have to even touch these. Now, if you wanted to come in here and drop uh, you know, crossfades, you can do that. There's another feature in Pro Tools, and I'm sure there's other features in the DAW you're using where once it punches back in, it'll automatically place a crossfade. And if you have that feature, definitely use it. I just didn't set it up in this session uh, as I just wanted to show you the punch and roll method. But again, let's listen back and just see how clean these punches are. She's not feeling well at the moment. He nodded as if he knew why and sympathized. And we'll go to the next one here. Into the drawer and slid it toward me. Some in there for you too. Okay, so I heard the click of my mouth. But in between where the punch-in actually happens, there is no pop or click, right? Let's listen again. And slid it toward me. Some in there for you. Right. So in slip mode in Pro Tools, you can just I could just clean this up easily by doing that. That way this stays here, doesn't move. I could put in a little fade right there if I wanted. But this is all manual editing. And slid it toward me. Some in there for you. Super clean, right? So I hope that shows you how you could set up the punch and roll method in your DAW and have a very easy editing session afterward where you're not wasting a lot of time cleaning it up, which can get very daunting. And you can move right into mastering your audiobook. I really hope that this helps you get a better look at how the punch and roll process works. And while this isn't everything there is to know about punch and roll, this is the basics of how it works and how you can set it up in your DAW. But I'm curious, leave me a comment below. Are you using the punch and roll method? If not, then what are you using? If you are, what are some tips and tricks that you use that may be DAW specific? And what else would you like to see in detail involving this method? And again, if you're looking for another resource to use when you're EQing your voice, then remember, download my narration EQ guide at thehomeaudioproject.com slash EQ. All right, my friend, I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you in another video real soon.